Hey, 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 welcome back to I'm Pinky and I'm Not Ashamed. And in this video, I'm going to do a little bit of debunking because there's quite a few uh, men on TikTok who claim to be dating coaches and claim to be experts about women. And, you know, I could just laugh when I hear it. But the problem is a lot of people are listening to the, these experts and believing what they say. <clears throat> Have you seen the study? This is crazy. This idea that when women take birth control, it, it ramps up their estrogen levels and it causes them uh, to, it makes your body think you're pregnant. So, so first of all, the pill is normally a combination of estrogen and progesterone. So they are used to prevent ovulation from occurring at all. It doesn't actually trick your body into thinking it's pregnant. It really just stops your body from producing an egg. Also helps uh, make the cervix softer and the mucus so that, you know, um, an egg wouldn't implant there anyway. You don't have so a you period. Don't get pregnant. So you don't get He's not aware that you do still have a period when you are on the pill. Don't get pregnant. And in doing so, what's happened is the hormonal birth control, there's been some studies on this, and they're inconclusive, but there's... You just hear him say that they were inconclusive. wonder how many studies were done and by whom, but whatever study he has read, it was inconclusive. Something, hap something is happening. These women take this uh, hormonal birth control, and when they do so, they become less attracted to super masculine features. And when they get off the birth control because they want to have a baby with their new husband, then they get off the birth control and they look at their like weak chin cuck boyfriend, and they're like, oh my God, what did I do? And then we have a 53% divorce rate. It's almost like he hasn't listened to himself speak. So in a roundabout way, he managed to blame women who take birth control on then not being attracted to their husbands when they came off birth control and that caused 53% of divorces. You just heard what he said. <laughs> Firstly, I'm pretty sure there would be some stats to say that, you know, 90 to 100% of women who choose to come off birth control to have a child with their husband do just that. I've never heard of a woman going, oh, well, I was going to have a child with you, but now I'm going to divorce you. Also, this person, this guy, um, Michael, has forgotten or doesn't realise that when you're taking the pill, every three weeks, you have seven days off the pill. So is he thinking that women are not attracted for three weeks, attracted for a week to their husband? <laughs> make it make sense, it doesn't. <laughs> I'd like to add that if you look up the studies on this point, it wasn't the oestrogen that um, the experts thought might be the problem, it was the progesterone. Progesterone, don't always know how to say that. So they're saying when you're on the pill, it's the progesterone that dominates the entire cycle. So it had nothing to do with estrogen. So there you go. The term toxic masculinity gets thrown out a lot, right? Yeah, yeah. The, the term came from in the 90s, when you and I were growing up, prisoners, violent felons in prison, whenever they would go to escalate, you, step, you stepped on my shoe, I'm going to stab you. Yeah. That was where the term toxic masculinity came yeah. from. So I had to stop him right there because I, of course, went and Googled when did the term toxic masculinity occur. And it first comes up, uh, toxic masculinity emerged within the, the poet, poetic men's movement of the 1980s. It was first coined by Shepard Bliss. Bliss confirmed to me in a 2019 email that he coined the term to characterise his father's militarised authority masculinity. Then what happened afterwards is psychiatrists got a, a hold of that word and they start using it for anything that is that they disagree with. Global warming, toxic masculinity. <laughs> Higher taxes, it's because of toxic masculinity. Yeah. Men are not making in the working force, it's because of toxic masculinity. I find it so interesting that the start of the movement focused on men's healing, using male-only workshops, wilderness retreats and rites of passage to rescue what it saw as essentially 
masculine qualities and archetypes, the king, the warrior, the wild man, and so on, from what it dubbed toxic masculinity. So I find that very interesting because that was really men um, starting the movement against uh, male toxicity. That's just really interesting to me. Um, in the 1990s and early 2000s, the term spread to other self-help uh, circles and into academic work, for example, on men's mental health. So some US conservatives began applying the term to low-income, underemployed, marginalised men, prescribing solutions like restoring male-dominated families and family values. So, so, sorry, psychiatrists and that didn't just grab this word and start using it against men. It was a word that men were using to help other men to begin with. And then some US conservatives began applying the term to men that really needed it, but in a way to restore men and family values. That's crazy. So I'm just finding this very interesting. So I feel like it's one of these things you should always research and Google what someone tells you. This guy really doesn't know what he's talking about at all. Anyway, I just want to bring that up because when you said that you were down to fight all the time, that's actually where the term comes from. It doesn't come from just a man wanting to be a normal masculine human. You talk about where sexual market value peak for women being at 23 and for men being around mm -hmm. 38. That's not, I, I had heard that from you, but I also read Dataclism. Dataclism yeah. talks yes. and shows irrefutable, <laughs> unassailable proof that what you said mm -hmm. is true, separate to that. So if you have a problem with this idea, when mm -hmm. women are 29 and they hear that, what we, uh, Rolo Tomasi said that it was 23 years old when you're at your, or 23 to 25. And my, my whole thing is like, no, you're not arguing with Rolo Tomasi, you're arguing with statistics. Mm -hmm. that, that if you're offended by that, you're offended by the truth. And if the mm -hmm. truth is ugly to you, then it's ugly. If I'm an oncologist and I study cancer, that doesn't mean I condone cancer cancer. It doesn't mean I don't condone cancer. Mm -hmm. I deal with the fact that it is the way that it is. Mm -hmm. And so that is one of the ugly truths. Again, I had to do some Googling and he mentioned dataclism. That's, that's the best proof in the world. So I had to go and have a look and there is a book by a guy called Dataclism. And he makes some different suggestions and things. By drawing on terabytes of data from Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, OKCupid, OK and many other sites, he examines the terrain of human experiences to answer a range of questions. Doesn't matter where you went to school, how racist are we, blah, blah, blah. Now, I, to claim that this man makes all his... Uh, things on actual statistics, that's an untruth. He looks at definitely some social media stuff and he um, makes some, you know, judgments based on that. But this isn't a scientific peer-reviewed blah, 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 using all the information you could and using people's expertise. He's just a guy taking some data from some social media sites and putting it all together and it doesn't even look like he's trying to pretend he's the know-it-all. So for a dating coach to sort of use him as the god of information because, you know, if you uh, can quote dataclism, it's all true, that's absolutely ridiculous. That's not a scientific proof at all and not the way I would presume somebody that was professional and trying to make out that everything he says is really truthful would say that would not be my go-to I might use like I said a scientific peer-reviewed study by somebody but I certainly wouldn't be um quoting dataclism as my main go-to for top-notch information but there you go just another person on the TikTok app giving his opinion and uh, pretending he knows a whole lot of facts without any proof. But there you go. I feel like I debunked him in three, uh, three of his TikTok videos. I feel like uh, he'll stay as popular as he is and people are just going to say he knows what he's talking about. But I think I proved he doesn't. Anyway. Thanks heaps for watching. Bye for now.